welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to be doing question 5 from the 2017 paper 1 for the A-level physics. So we have got a diagram here of a ladder and it says, it's got loads of diagrams on it, it says explain how figure 7 shows that the friction between the ladder and the wall is negligible and it's only worth one mark. The gist of it is here's the wall, so if I just draw the diagram here because it will help me for later questions. So I've got my weight this way, I've got the resultant here, so I'm just going to call this resultant of the wall, I've got my weight going down and that's what they've written. And it says here, why do I think the friction between the ladder of the wall is negligible? And the reason I know it's negligible is because literally I have got a force acting at 90 degrees. The friction would be working up or down and would cause the resultant force, this is not reaction force, this is a resultant force here, to be at a slight angle. So the answer to question 5.1 is that because the uh, resultant from the wall is the same as the reaction, friction must have no effect. So because it's literally going in the same direction as that reaction force from the wall, there must be no friction there at all. The resultant is the reaction force. Which leads me on to 5.2. And it's telling me that the forces on the ladder are in equilibrium. Draw an arrow on figure 0.7, which is this one here, um, <coughs> of the resultant force from the ground from the ladder. So from this point here. Now, if this is an equilibrium, I have got a resultant force here. I'm just going to write 5.2 here. <coughs> I have got a resultant force going this direction and I've also got my weight acting down. So this is from the wall and this is my re uh, weight here. Which means to be in equilibrium, this vector diagram must be complete. It must go back on itself. So this here must be the resultant from the floor. So my force here, and this is for two marks, is first of all, you get a force if it's vertical, because a lot of people might have just drawn a reaction force like that. But it's asking for the resultant, which includes all the friction and things. So for two marks, you must have had a force that went like that, at a slight angle. So this is the reaction resultant from the floor. So this resultant from the floor incorporates the reaction force from the floor and any friction on the floor. And it <coughs> must be at an angle to make these two in equilibrium with each other. So there's one mark for it being vertical, and there's one mark for actually being an angle. And what they're after is on the actual script here, is they want it to be at an angle to go through the on ladder part of the label. And you could have got that by taking a scale drawing of those forces. Okay. But just to make you aware, it is at an angle because it is the resultant of all the forces here. So not just the reaction, but the friction too. So question 5.3, and the reason I'm leaving this all up, because this will really assist me. 5.3 says the ladder is 8 metres long, so it's an 8 metre long ladder. Okay, and weighs... So the weight is 390 newtons. Calculate how much force is on the ladder. Now, if they're giving you a distance and a force, they normally want you to do something to do with moments. The weight always acts at halfway along, okay? So this is four meters, so this here is another four meters. This here is 60 degrees. I am going to take moments around this point here, and the reason I'm doing that is because any forces at that point mean absolutely nothing to my formula, which is fantastic, because it removes an unknown formula. Okay, so I'm going to take moments around RF. And this is my force, so this is my weight, this is 390 newtons. And I need the distance it makes 
to the uh, a perpendicular distance from the pivot. So the thing is, if I took the for if I took this four meters, this force is not perpendicular with this force meters. This force is perpendicular with this distance here. So that distance there, so I've got a lovely little triangle. I've got four cos sixty, which equals two. <coughs> I'm going to times that by my three hundred and ninety. So that is going to be seven hundred and eighty newtons. Okay. Now, if I go anti-clockwise, so this one is turning me this way, this force is turning me this way. Again, this force is not perpendicular with this distance. So I need to find out the perpendicular distance, which is this one here from the pivot. So that's going to be eight Ooh. sine 60 which equals, put my calculator in, 8, which is 6.9. And I'm going to times that by my r at the wall. And if this is an equilibrium, the clockwise moment must equal the anti-clockwise moment. So I know that must be 780. So my reaction at the wall, the resultant at the wall, is 780 divided by that which is 112.5, or approximately 113 newtons. So that there is a way of doing it. If they give you a force and a distance, you've got to bet they, they want you to do moments. Now, they could have asked you, of course, you could have done components, but you would have right tis was, because you've got this resultant of uh, friction here, and you'd have to do simultaneous equations and get it out. Moments is a very clean, clear-cut way of working out any forces. Now, a student mentioned to me today, and it makes a lot of sense, that if I've got things at an angle, the easiest way to do it is that if I want a downforce, I want the distance in the opposite um, axis. So if I've got a y-axis force, so a down, I want a left and right distance. And of course, if I've got an x-axis force, I would like a y or an up and down distance. And that kind of made sense and is really, really useful to be aware of. Do you see how I label my diagram? Label it, okay? It will really assist you. In this case, they did actually want you to make sure this force. So make sure this force is very prominent and clear and label it what they wanted to label it, which I believe was G, okay? Um, that will help you immensely. Just make sure you label any clear forces that you need to use. So let's move on to 5.4, which is a three marker. Okay, so there's a three mark written question that's going to ask what happens if you start walking up the slope. So suggest the changes to the forces acting when somebody climbs the ladder. So as somebody climbs the ladder, the first thing that you might be aware of, so if I just, I should have not rubbed it off then, I should, I'll put this back on. Okay, so I've got my weight. I've got my resultant from the wall, and I've got a resultant from the floor, okay? As my weight, as I add weight to it, my resultant from the floor and the wall, will, uh, resultant from the floor will have to increase, okay? So the first bullet point is the resultant force from floor will increase, okay, due to more force going down, okay. So to keep an equilibrium, if I've got more weight going down, because RF is the force acting in the upwards direction, this would mean I would have to work it down. So that's the first bit. This also means our, uh, the resultant of the wall oh, hello, will also increase to keep equilibrium. So if this force goes up, because this is at a slight angle, this implies that this force might start having to go up too. 
However, it could also mean that the frictional forces... So the frictional forces will increase. For this to change, the reaction force will change, but also the friction might increase as well. And this is to make sure that it actually stays here. And this is, if you think about it, as you climb up a ladder, you can hear the <coughs> as the ladder actually grates against the wall. So the frictional force is being increased. So I've suggested, the question was, suggest the changes, so suggest, so this wants the changes to the forces acting on the ladder, and what I've done is I've broken it down into three things that could affect it. So the three, two biggest ones, so that would be obvious, would what would happen to the resultant at the wall and the resultant at the floor. And the first idea, the resultant at the floor would have to increase to keep equilibrium, because I'm putting more of a down force, so I need more of an up force, which means the resultant at the wall would also have to increase because this is at a slight angle to keep equilibrium. This will mean there is a likelihood that the frictional forces will increase at the wall and the floor. And this is what suggesting is. I'm telling you if something would go up or go down. So this is actually a really good way of trying to do these suggest questions. So there you go. That is question five from paper one.